Hello YouTube, I'm Zeon, you're in Galactic View. In the previous video, we were working with part 1 of part 2 of the hair tutorial, the most quote, trickiest part of this tutorial, end quote. But that was part 1 of the two part of the hair tutorial. The first one was for base hair and hair creation. This one is gonna be when you make some minimal mistakes with har, but it won't make much difference, depending on the hairstyle. Now, let's continue where we left off. When you create a new freehand goop, always make sure that you'll do it by clicking the base hair. That way, you'll start with the standard hair form, also known as the green dots. It will be a mess when you do it with the current hair group that wasn't supposed to be there. When we make a new freehand group, we need to set it up to our preferences. Once you do that, we can continue making hair. Once we have a new empty base hair we can start to upland better. Whenever you've made a hair that is too short, long and or made a wrong direction, you can simply go to the control points. Which is two icons beneath the drawing tool, also known as the pencil in the character design on the left side. When you select the control points tool, you should be seeing white dots along the hair that you've made. If that doesn't happen then simply select the desired hair and you will see it. If you want to move the white circles around a specific area, simply click it when it turns into a red circle and drag it, while left mouse button is clicked, to the desired length. You can repeat this process with the other white circles within the hair if you desire. You can move the hair anywhere you want within the hair base range, in which it will depend a lot on your character's hair design. As you can see, when you add another layer make sure you've made enough space between layers so you can see what are you doing. The hair can be moved at any direction, and if it's simple, it can be seen easily. If a hair sleeve is complex then it's going to be a challenge. As mentioned before, every single white circle can be moved, but it will affect the other parts of the hair. When you continue with your hairstyle and decide to add another layer you'll see the difference of what I mean soon. Since you can go to a new layer and continue making hair, first you need to make the hair base in order to continue with the hair slide. If you don't want to see the previous hair layer for some reason, you can go to the hair group and then go to the right side. There should be an icon of an eye with a diagonal line crossing it. That's the visibility layer, it allows you to choose between seeing the layer the eye icon itself and the invisibility layer, the eye icon with a diagonal line crossing it. It helps a lot, even if hair gets complicated. Now, when you place the layers visible it should be looking like this. See what I meant? It's slightly noticeable from the varied perspective the difference of hair layers. It becomes more noticeably if it becomes an actual animated character. Now you'll see the effects that happens when you try to shape the base hair while well, you already have a hair cell on it, but in a small scale.
Now that you have seen how to move hair once it's already been made, I will show you about hair texture. This is where you add the hair color, it's pretty much like clothing editor painting. But first let me finish editing the character's hairstyle so we can stay on track. Now that we're on track, let's continue with hair editor. You should be in the design tab on the left side. If you are, head to the right side where it says texture. Once there, everything should be identical as the clothing texture. So what we'll do is head to the default image on the texture tab, which is the loss option on the left side. Let's go to adding color to the hair, select your hair color. Once you start painting things will get weird, that's because you basically have to paint the hair texture before making anything else. By changing the base color and the shade color, it won't be enough because on Veroid it only accepts it like that. But if you decide to transfer the character to MMD, the only thing that it will accept is the original texture which on Veroid is a default color. This is what I was referring to, what is basically doing, is mixing those colors together. If this isn't what you wanted then there's another way. The top side of the texture paints the bottom of the hair, to better say it, it paints the root of the hair, and the bottom part of the hair texture is the top part of the hair. In other words the hair texture and hair are inverse, texture top is hair root bottom, and texture bottom is hair tip. This is the weird color combination that it does. Regardless of what you try to do it will make it even weirder, repainting it won't help at this point. You will also see the different painting patterns that it will leave on the hair. Even with the color sample isn't a good solution to this method. As I mentioned before, the only thing that changing colors of texture alone won't be enough, so you'll have to change it from the base color and shade color, so then make the proper colors. Another method of changing color fucly is by using the color sampler tool, since it will take the paint sample from the color that you choose.
Another way of adding another hair from a different type of color is by going to the rut side when you choose to draw more hair. Beneath the hairbrush it should be saying material and shows the color sample of the hair that you have. Below that it should be a button that says duplicate. Press that button, you'll then have a copy of the current hair color and texture. Since you have the same copy of the hair color and texture of your first hair, you can then modify it like you do with clothes by going to the texture tab and heading to the text tab at the end of the left side. You should be able to see a new hair tab at the end, head over there and change it to your preferences. Then, you can repeat the same process of using the color sampler tool. Since now you have a proper hair texture painted properly, you can create your own hairstyle without any further complications, even if you export it to another programs. Now you will see the effect of the hair color texture that has been painted properly. I will continue making this character with these techniques shown in this video. That's all from this tutorial. In the next video, it will be the last part of the Varoid Basic tutorial. There's gonna be an intermediate level of Varoid tutorial playlist. Remember to like, subscribe, and squeeze that notification button for future videos. It will please me.